Hey everyone, Peter Coltrider here, 620 Bikes. Let's build our electric e-trike. Okay, so we have our electric tricycle here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and build it for you. It's gonna take a little bit of, a little while. Uh, you can definitely do it. If you have any issues, give us a call, 310-982-2877, or email us at the team at 630.com. Remember, remember 630 is spelled out, S-I-X-T-H-R-E-E-Z-E-R-O. All right, it's gonna take a little bit of a little while. All I'm bringing is a knife. I'm actually going to assemble it with the tools that are inside the box so that you can also do it. If you have your own set of tools, of course, it does make it easier to have like a more professional set of tools, but the rudimentary tools that we have in here will be enough for you to get riding, okay? In this particular one, the battery is included. Uh, it depends on kind of uh, different models and stuff like that, but sometimes the battery will be in the box, sometimes it will arrive separately. Okie doke. All right, let's get to it. Here we go. By the way, it is February 1st today. Beautiful day in Orange County. So uh, I don't know if it's snowy where you are, but um, you'll be able to ride soon. Or at least if the roads are plowed, you certainly will. Okay, so here's what the box looks like from the top. I'm actually gonna slice it in the front so you can see how it's packed. It's also easier than lifting it out of the box. Of course, if you're thinking about returning it, then uh, you'll need to keep the box in shape. Okay, so here's the body of the trike hidden behind this block of cardboard here. And then here are the two rear wheels. All right, there you go. So actually maybe I'll just, uh, well, you know what I'll do. I'm gonna cut this off and get it out of our way. Then we'll move all this stuff here. Okay, so on the top, we have the rear part of the tricycle. We call it the rear subframe. It could be called just about anything, but that's what we went with. Okay, and then the main body of the tricycle. And the front wheel is right here. The front wheel has the motor. The motor's on the front. There you go. So this guy's a little heavier, yeah. The front, uh, or one of the fenders is also on the uh, front wheel there. All right, now we got a whole mess, but we'll make sense of it here really quickly. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my knife out, make some cuts. So you can see what we're looking at. It's almost double boxed. The, um, our bikes have to make it through the FedEx or UPS gauntlet and uh, it's quite a harrowing experience for these things. They get, they go through a lot. Um, usually they show up in pretty decent shape because of the way we package them. However, we are also limited by the size of box that we can send to keep the shipping reasonable. Otherwise it gets pretty outrageous. Um, but you know, if you do find any, uh, you know, any problems, if anything gets banged up by FedEx or UPS, just let us know. Of course, we'll take care of it. There's also a basket here. Set that aside for the moment. I have a small box called box number three. It's got our pedals and a couple other little parts that we'll need. Box four here is for the seat. If you think you're mixing, missing box one, don't worry. Uh, box one is actually the main bike box itself. Fair amount of foam here. You can use that for a next year's Christmas presents. Okay, let's move all this out of here. Cool. All righty. So the first thing I like to do actually is to assemble the rear subframe with the uh, rear wheels. Okay, dope. So I'm going to set the front wheel aside right here. Oh yes. And 
the famous box too also, which has instructions in it. And also our tools that I'll be using. There we go. Plus a couple of other little uh, introductory materials in here. Voila. Okay. The two rear wheels are zip tied together. And here's another rear fender. Okay. The rear wheels are a little bit different. They're not exact, they're not identical. So I'll show you the difference. But it's pretty self-explanatory. You can't get it wrong. Here's the front fender. It's pretty ingeniously packed, honestly, uh, because we were given very, very strict size limits by FedEx. Um, it's uh, really hard to, to cram it all in there and get it packaged nicely. Also, like I said, for them to withstand uh, the amount of abuse they endure uh, at the hands of our carriers. But they are heavy after all and uh, a little hard to maneuver. Okay, so here's the rear wheels. We'll take care of those later. Um, we have uh, one of the whole axle holes is circular and then one is shaped like a D. Okay, now the axles on the rear sub subframe are also shaped this way, so you can't really get them wrong. The, um, also, they are directional, so they should be pointing in a certain direction, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's not a functional feature, it's more of a uh, design feature, but I'll show you which way they go, just so that you know. So here we go. Let's uh, get this rear subframe ready. I'm going to cut some zip ties off. Now what you're going to find is that we have the rear assembly. There's a cog right here. Okay, we're going to attach a chain to that. And then we have two axle nuts on each end. Okay. We're going to take those off. It's one axle. Here's the other axle. And then just as I promised, <clears throat> this axle here is circular, and then this one is kind of shaped like a D. It has a flat side to it. Now, <clears throat> the, uh, the basket's going to attach to the top here, so it already has bolts here for attaching the basket. So this is actually the top with the bolts here, okay? And so that means that, um, and then this is going to attach to the front part of the uh, tricycle. So the uh, subframe will attach this way, going towards the front of the tricycle, okay? Now, again, like I said, the tires are directional. On a bicycle, uh, or especially like an e-trike, or an e-bike really, I don't think it makes a lot of difference which way the tread goes. It's really more of a, a design, is really all it is. In a car, it deflects the water if you're going uh, at a high speed in uh, watery conditions, you know, rainy conditions. Uh, but that's, it's not gonna happen to you. You're not gonna go fast enough on a tricycle um, or a bicycle really, unless you happen to be racing. And if you're racing, then you're gonna be on slicks on the road. But anyway, the direction that you can tell is that forward is, um, is uh, kind of the, it looks like the tread pattern is pointing in a certain direction. So this one's pointing towards the front. Now on the front wheel, it does matter because if you put the front wheel on backwards, then it will actually go backwards when you put on the throttle or use the pedal assist, okay? So make sure you get the front wheel forward. But the rear wheels, it doesn't matter, except if you just want to look a consistent look, of course, you can do that. And like, you know, on the left side here is the D-shaped one. That's the left side. And it just slides on. It's very simple. Just slides right on. Boop. And then just to get it started, I'm going to go ahead and put the washer on. 
and then one of the regular axle nuts all the way down. And then on top of that will be a nylock, which is a, a metal nut with a nylon insert used to lock the nut in place so it won't move. Um, this one can't be turned uh, by your fingers. This one, you have to use a tool to tighten it all the way down. So don't be concerned if that second one doesn't go on all the way with just your hand. Uh, you're going to have to use a tool. The nylon stops it. That's the job. All right, now on the right side, we'll use the wheel with the circular axle. Again, doesn't matter which way it goes on, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this way, the Ford way, like I just talked about. And then we will put on the washer. The washer, the regular axle nut. Just, just hand tighten there just to get it started. And then we'll go ahead and place the nylon, nylon uh, insert nut there just to get it started. Okay, no, cool. So that's about ready and staged. We've got it like this. Of course, it's flopping downwards this way. So later on, we'll move it upwards like this. And, uh, and we'll be able to attach the basket later, and then we'll attach the fenders to these brackets here. The noise that you're hearing is the nuts um, and bolts here for the fenders. So anyway, once those get tightened up, they'll stop making that, that racket right there. Okay, cool. Let's move on. I'm going to set this to the side now. Hopefully it doesn't roll away. Okay, there it is. Nice. Okay, so here is the main part of the tricycle. And let me clean up a little bit of my mess. I'm going to follow my instructions. That makes logical sense. So in case you're following the instructions, then anyway, I made these instructions. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, these actually were made after thousands and thousands of messages of feedback. We used to have uh, manuals that people really, really, really didn't like, um, and they were quite frankly terrible. And so uh, using a lot of feedback, we made new ones. And most people tend to like these. Of course, you can't please everyone, so, um, you know. <clears throat> but uh, anyway, most people seem to like these. One thing to know about these is that um, throughout the book, there are little QR codes you can scan uh, for the different steps to watch a video. So you can either use your QR code scanner or your camera. And just uh, click on that and you'll see a, a nice little short video that will show you that exact step. Okay? Cool. All right. So I like to do the rear assembly, but actually my instruction book is telling me to put my handlebars in first. That's an interesting choice. That was my choice at some point, I guess. I made these like two, two three years ago, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so there's a, in the fork here, there's a piece of black plastic. That is packaging, okay? Sometimes folks get a little worried about that piece because maybe it might get broken or smushed or whatever, but that's actually packaging. You can just discard it. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my tool, my knife here, and cut the handlebars loose. I'm gonna have a whole lot of zip ties to go through. We'll find more as we go along. Be very, very careful, obviously, not to cut any wires. Um, if you use snips or scissors or something like that, or diagonal cutters, it'll be easier uh, to not cut yourself or the wires. Okay, so here are the handlebars. Obviously, they already have the wires and cables attached, all that. And then there's a loose one right here that's going to go to your front wheel, which has the motor on it. Great, so let's take the packaging off of the stem. This part here that holds the handlebar to the rest of the bike is called the stem, okay? Actually just place that in here. And what you wanna do is you want your cables to look like mine. See how this looks? The cables and wires here, all of it's nice and free. It should be pretty uh, self-explanatory, pretty obvious, but it's possible sometimes that people get them twist it up like this. Uh, actually, it's not a bad, this is actually also fine. In fact, I've done this before too, because it um, sometimes in a way looks nicer. You can do that, that like that, um, or they can be zip tied together later on, like this, if you prefer it to look a little bit neater. The only thing that needs to happen is that the whole, you know, the bike can turn, that the uh, front wheel can turn. So anyway, I'm gonna leave it like that. You can make your choice. 
And now we can open up our tool kit. Like I said, this is a, bit, a little bit of a rudimentary tool kit, but it is nicer than most. And it will get you through the build, everything you need here. All the um, sizes of wrenches, uh, which I think are mostly uh, 10, 13, 14, 15, and 18 uh, millimeter wrenches. And then you'll also need uh, four, five, six uh, millimeter Allens. Uh, we also have a three here, which you shouldn't need. That would be for the shifter, but you won't, you won't need it. Just kind of a bonus. Uh, one little thing about the screwdriver. The screwdriver you have looks like this. There's only one, but you can yank it out and have two different sides so that one is Phillips and the other is flathead. Um, probably won't use this flathead at all, except for when, maybe when we put the little chain together. I'll show you how that works. But mostly you'll be using the Phillips. For some reason they put it with the flathead as like the standard how it comes. But anyway, you just yank it out and flip it over and there you've got your Phillips. Okay, cool. That's handy. It's actually nice to, if you don't have your own toolkit, um, a lot of folks don't. It's nice to keep this around just for other purposes too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, to make everything more visible for you, I'm going to go ahead and take the packaging off. Generally when, uh, if, I, if I'm building a bike or whatever, uh, taking the packaging off will be one of the last steps. I'll keep the packaging on so that it actually protects the bike from, from me in case the tool slips or whatever. So you may want to just keep the packaging on until the end. But um, for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and take the packaging off now just to kind of declutter your image here. Right here is the battery, by the way. It's already in the box, already in the bike, ready to go. I think there's a number of ways to get this cardboard out. Um, you could remove the battery with it. Also, you should yank it straight up like that. Attached to this uh, seat stay right here is a little piece of packaging that has the seat post in it, okay? So just so you know, that's attached to the one of the seat stays just like this and it's packaged. So here's the seat post. We're not gonna put it on. I don't want you to put the seat post in, okay, until you put the seat on it because it's pretty common actually that folks will drop the seat post all the way down into the frame and it'll disappear and you won't be able to get it out. Um, and it's, it's a little difficult to get out. Um, it can always be done. I've never not been able to do it. Sometimes it's taking me up to 45 minutes. Uh, main thing you can do, we do have a video for that. You turn the bike upside down and bang on the bottom of the bottom bracket with a hammer um, covering, covering that area maybe with a piece of wood or something to protect it. But anyway, just to prevent that from happening, we're gonna put the seat on before we put the seat post in, okay? If you're brave enough, if you, if you, know, if you like living dangerously, then go ahead and put the seat post in, but we'll save it for later. Um, and I'll show you that we can put the seat on first and then put it into the, the bike, okay? So here we have the handlebars. I have not tightened them yet. We're just gonna leave them loose, but remember we're gonna tighten everything before we go on a test ride and also make sure that everything's nice and tight before we start to use the bike. It's very, very important that you assemble this correctly um, and that you get everything tightened properly. As you're going along, you can uh, just get the fasteners in place and then we'll tighten everything at a later point here. Okay, so I think what we'll do now, well actually let's consult my directions. Again, let's see what they say. We'll go, in, we'll go in order so we don't get too confused here. Okay, so now it tells me to put the rear assembly on. Um, it says go ahead and put the fenders on. Uh, I think I remember doing that because it was a little easier to get to the fenders while it's off of the bike um, rather than when it's on. So let's go ahead and put the fenders on then. I think that's a good idea. I remember that came about because of uh, doing it the other way before and it was a little clunkier. But really you can save the fenders for later if you want. Or we can go ahead and do them now. All right. So in box three, you're going to find, here's box three. This has our parts. Let's see what's in here. We have, we have our pedals. Uh, we have the little chain I was talking about that we'll need later. We have a little cover for the headset, which is right here. Oh, I missed that. 
Yeah, let's just do that right now. I always forget this stuff. Every time. It's kind of a, uh, kind of silly how I do that. But anyway, this is just a cosmetic piece. It just covers the headset like that. You don't actually need it, but it does look nicer. So what I usually do is slide it onto the stem because it's a little uh, tight. It's, it's like that on purpose. Then slide the stem in. And then, like I said, we can deal with that later. But anyway, there's the headset cover in place. All right, cool. Uh, also got a whole bag of extra hardware. So this hardware is extra. You should not need any of it. Um, however, if you do, here it is. You won't have to wait for us to send you some in case something happens to be missing. I don't expect anything to be missing, but again, here it is. But um, also don't get alarmed, this is extra. Uh, you should not need any of this for assembly. Uh, all, the, all the hardware that you need is already on the bike for you. All right, we also have a front reflector, and then we have two rear reflectors. I'll tell you a funny story about the rear reflectors. So when we first introduced these e-tricycles, um, you know, a few things happened that we did not anticipate uh, with, um, with going through the FedEx gauntlet there. And uh, one thing was that these reflectors were handily already attached to the um, rear fender. So they just go like this. Okay, they just slide into these two little holes here. And then they come with a little, um, a little 10 millimeter nut. Should be 10, maybe it's eight. And then it's attached like that. However, when they were packaged like that, they were, they were popping like if you stepped on a, a Christmas light, one of those big Christmas light bulbs. Um, and so we were always sending these and customers were having to replace them. So anyway, the idea was just to go ahead and put them in the park, spot, park box. And ever since, uh, we've never had a problem with that. So go ahead, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's an eight. Yeah, it's an eight. So just go ahead and tighten that nut up, give it a couple of turns there. Um, if you're strong or if you're used to working on cars, uh, bikes, there are certain fasteners that need to be tightened all the way, like on a car, like really, really hard. On other ones, they, you just need to get them to where they're tight and just a little bit of extra um, cinching. Uh, some of the parts are like this reflector right here. You don't want to crank all the way down that. It's just going to pull the, uh, pull the hardware through the plastic and break it. So on bikes, it's definitely possible to over tighten things and break, and break them. Um, you know, bikes are made with smaller parts and uh, bikes tend to be under engineered to try and make them light. That's always been a part of the bicycle industry, whereas cars having a massive amount of power, um, things are over engineered. Also, they tend to, you know, need to go on highways and things like that. So with a car, yeah, if you're used to like really cranking down on things, uh, back it off a little bit, back, back your uh, strength off a little bit and just finesse, finesse things like these um, reflectors. When we get to other things like putting the axle nuts on or when we're attaching the uh, rear assembly, all that's going to be tightened as much as you can tighten it. We want those nice and tight. Also like the handlebars here, um, these two nuts that hold the handlebar and the stem are also going to need to be as tight as you can make them. We'll go ahead and put the rear reflector on the other rear fender. So the other rear fender is attached to the front wheel. That's just how it works best for packaging. Which again is a real, a real puzzle. I think it's done quite ingeniously, truthfully. Um, so here we go. Pull this. I'll set the front wheel aside again. Be careful with this front wheel. The front wheel motor has a wire coming out of the axle actually. A little bit delicate area right there. Um, and then there's also a little rubber cap here to help protect that part where the wire curves. Be careful of that. Also, where the wire connects, it has tiny little pins. And those little pins are very, very delicate and fragile. And uh, if you break one, the bike won't work. So be super careful. Right now they're covered by a, piece of a white piece of plastic packaging to protect them. So just be mindful of that. Keep that out of the way. I'll keep that wire up nice in the air like that. Okay. Got some plastic on the fender here. And then we're going to put the other reflector on. Got these two little holes here in the back. We put the screw part and then there's a little um, plastic clip. We'll go in the bottom hole. Put on the nut. Grab the eight millimeter. You know it's eight millimeter because the wrenches are clearly marked with the numbers eight, ten, etc. Should have thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and eighteen. 
um, and then just tighten it down a little bit. Doesn't need a whole lot, just enough to keep it on there. There we go. Yeah, it's a pretty cool looking reflector too, I think. It looks really solid. But yeah, when they were already attached to the, <laughs> to the fender and shipping, they were not making it at all. Okay, so we'll switch back a little bit. I'm going to move my tricycle main part over here. And we'll bring the rear subframe over, which like I said, has the wheels on it already, as you know. And we're going to install the fenders. So this part's a little bit tricky. If you have a friend, you might, uh, it might be helpful because this does want to flop down like that. Anyway, there are uh, bolts and nuts right here already for the fender installation. Okay, so clearly, uh, as I told you before, the part with the brackets here is facing forward. And so this is the rear part where I am. And so the reflector is gonna go in the rear part. That's how you'll know that which way the reflector, or which way the fender goes. Because one fender is the right one and one is the left one. Um, they're actually the same fender as far as the fender goes, but it just matters which way the brackets are facing. Uh, where's my other one? Did I put it oh, right here behind me. They're really the same fender except for the brackets that hold them are in different orientation. So there we go. I'm going to hold this with my knee and So the nuts, they've engaged the nylon, so they're a little bit um, tight on there. You can either get off with your fingers or you can use the tools, which would be a Phillips and a 10 millimeter. Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, my Phillips and my 10 right here. So with the Phillips, you can go through the spokes to access it. And then, um, oh, that's not 10. Right here. That's kind of funny. It reminds me of, uh, I got these tools all over the place. And I'm trying to make a, a video for you guys. Um, so I have to try and keep track of my tools. And, uh, you know, in your own garage or living room, it won't be that big a deal if you uh, can't find your tools as quickly as I can. I mean, as, uh, as quickly. But uh, I need to try and do a better job of keeping track of my tools. Um, a very, very long time ago, I was in the Navy and I worked on a submarine. and. Submarine has a bilge and it's full of oil and water and lots of nasty stuff. And uh, <laughs> it kind of trained me. Um, if you ever drop a nut or, or a hardware or, some, or a tool or something, everything stops and you, you follow where that thing goes. Otherwise, it'll be lost forever. Um, so anyway, that's just something I learned. So if something drops like that, I, I stop everything and try to find it. However, I am doing a pretty good job of spreading my tools everywhere. Okay, cool. So, so. When we mount the uh, fenders, um, it could go on the outside or on the inside. Uh, it looks like uh, in this one, the inside's going to work better. Um, they're a little bit uh, malleable and flexible, so that you can center them on the tire. So anyway, I'm going to center. I'm going to set these with the brackets on the inside of the the flange that's welded to the frame here. And then, what we have is how the uh, nuts and bolts were arranged before I took them off, which is in the center, there's actually two. And then on the, on the outer two, there is only um, one set of nuts and bolts. Uh, we, we added a second set of hardware for the middle strut because the, um, even though there's three struts here, the fenders could sometimes uh, pivot like that. And that was causing a problem. So anyway, the, the two nuts there solves that issue. There's all sorts of little things that kind of pop up that you, you don't foresee. Um, but then, you know, we can make little adjustments and fix it. And it's great, it's really nice to see, uh, you know, a few things that used to be issues or difficulties um, just go away with a, little, with a little bit of creativity. I get that nut through there. And then the washer, I'm oh, sorry, the bolt goes through, then the washer, and then the nut. And then the second one through the center. By the way, um, you know, I've built literally thousands of bicycles in my life. And, you know, none of it's rocket science or, you know, 
hard to get your brain around, but uh, the experience really helps. Um, I'm going to be doing this probably a lot faster than you can. Uh, it may take you, I don't know, it might take a couple hours, three hours, I don't know. But um, it, it will take you, it will take a little while uh, to assemble this by yourself. Um, uh, a, a mechanic who's done, a, you know, a hundred or a thousand, a couple thousand times is obviously going to know all the little tricks and quirks. On this one, I haven't assembled a whole lot of these, um, so I'm not as familiar with the actual, um, you know, uh, order of operations per se, like what's most efficient, but still just in general I do. So uh, I want to encourage you to, you know, if you, if you start to get frustrated or whatever, just remember it, you haven't done this before, okay, and it's going to, you know, it's, it might take a little while. But, however, I know that you can do it. I, I know that everyone can do this. Um, it's definitely possible. And, you know, if you're going to buy a tricycle online, you're probably going to have to assemble it yourself. I don't, I don't know of any tricycles that come fully assembled. Um, if they did, they'd probably have to be of a different design, like maybe smaller wheels. And, uh, or, the, or the shipping would be astronomical. Uh, because if you go over that certain size that FedEx and UPS set, and I think it's the same size for both of them from what I've been able to tell, um, the, uh, the, the charges go up to where it just makes the, uh, it makes it uh, too exorbitant to afford. So there, that's a good start with that fender. It's really rigid there. And then we'll go ahead and put on this fender. Actually, before I do that, I gotta take the nuts and bolts off here again. Let's see if I can get those off with my just my hands and not use the tools. So there's four of them, two in the middle and one on each side for the three brackets or struts. Yeah, it's really a gorgeous day here, guys. It is. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's very, very blue sky. A gorgeous winter blue, but it doesn't feel like winter. Well, it feels like winter for. Orange County, California, but uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. And we just went through a lot of rain, um, which uh, <laughs> it's funny. Um, we're not used to rain here, but uh, we can certainly use it and we're happy we got it. All of our reservoirs are nice and full and uh, hopefully our fire season will be a little easier this year. And now, having, uh, having weathered that, <laughs> what for California is severe weather, it really is a glorious thing to be enjoying the sunshine. So anyway, if you're following along, here we are. We're just putting in the next sets of nuts and bolts here for the fenders to get those attached. Again, you could do this later on. Uh, the, um, the rear assembly obviously would hold itself if we already attached it to the, um, to the tricycle. But I can see from my directions that uh, I think that I must have found it easier to do um, with it not being attached to the rest of the trike just because uh, fewer things in the way. But as you can see, I'm having to do a little bit of extra work keeping it from rotating away from me. I'm holding it with my legs here. If you have a, a friend or a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or somebody like that to help you out, that's, that's great. Okay, again, it's also a good idea with, when you're assembling anything, by the way, this is just good, good knowledge to have for anything you assemble, if you're gonna get something from Ikea or anywhere. Um, put all the fasteners in, get them started, but don't tighten any of them until every, all of them are in place. If you tighten one, uh, you might not be able to get the rest into place because uh, pretty much anything that's gonna be assembled is going to need a little bit of, um, a little bit of wiggling around and uh, adjusting and stuff like that. So anyway, we're gonna leave all those loose like that. See how this is moving around. And then we'll just tighten those later. Um, but again, like I said, we want to make sure that we don't forget to, to tighten everything. But for now, uh, just leave it loose so that we can make adjustments and stuff like that. Um, also, uh, just in general, when you're putting these in, leave everything uh, assembled but not fully tightened. That way you can get the other parts in because they, they might not. Okay, cool. So now this is ready to go. It almost looks like, uh, almost looks like we got it, got it going, right? So here we go. Um, I'm going to consult our assembly guide again. Okay, yeah, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and 
this is the this is the fun part this is where it starts to look like a tricycle we're going to go ahead and attach the rear assembly which is all together now just not everything's completely tightened and attach it to the front part of the trike okay so um but too quickly there's a little extra step in here that i gotta tell you about so what we have right here are some carriage bolts these are called carriage bolts and a washer and a nylon insert nut. These are quite large actually. The carriage bolts on the bolt side uh, don't have anywhere to hold a tool, but they do have a square piece that actually fits into the frame. So it holds itself on this side and then you can just tighten the nut. So we're gonna remove both of those. Again, like I said, all the hardware is already on the tricycle. Um, if for some reason something did get, go missing, you have that extra bag but you should not need that extra bag of stuff um, to assemble the bike. Okay, so, so now we have these front, um, front brackets right here and they're going to slide in right here. Now these are slotted, okay? And they're slotted because we need to attach this small chain here, okay? Um, and so it's really important that we don't tighten everything down yet. We're going to go ahead and line those slots up with the two holes. Slots go on the outside. And then just to get it started, let's go ahead and put one of those carriage bolts in. And then put it through the slot. Whoop. Lost it. Once you get that first one, it makes everything a lot easier. And I got one back here. Just a matter of lining it up. There he is. Okay, cool. So I got one in. I'm going to go ahead and put the washer and one of the lock nuts on there just to get started, just to keep it in place. Okay, cool. So, and then with the slots, we're gonna go ahead and move this, uh, the back part all the way up, okay? So it can move back and forward. We wanna move it forward so that we can have these two sprockets closer together and then put the chain on, and then we'll go ahead and back it out to get the right chain tension. But actually, let me put the rest of the carriage bolts in. Line it up with the slot. There we go. Washer, lock nut, another carriage bolt from the inside going out into the slot. And then washer and the lock nut. And then we got one more over here. Okay, so now we've got them all started and I'm going to slide the rear assembly all the way in as far as it can go. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab this chain that came out of your little box. This chain has a master link. It's in a separate little package of plastic. And that just makes it so that you don't have to have a special tool to attach the chain. Uh, there's a special tool in a bike shop called Chain Breaker. I think it's kind of a cool name. Um, and that's used for putting chains together normally, but uh, without a chain breaker, you can't put together a regular chain that doesn't have a master link. So but with a master link, you can put the chain together just using um, just like a screwdriver or a little wrench or something. So we'll, we'll go over that. But now that we've slid the rear part as far as we can into the main part, I'm gonna go ahead and Bring the chain around both cogs. They don't have to actually be on the cog, okay, for us to do this. And then we're gonna get the two links together and 
you just slide the master one like through there, and then um, the master link through the two open ones, two open other links, and then put the face plate on the other side, and then there's a locking cotter that will slide together and will hold like everything like that together. And then you can put these, put the chain onto the cogs because you have that extra room. And then to tighten it up, we're going to go ahead and adjust it by moving it back and then we'll get the right chain tension. Okay. Perfecto. Looks great. All right, cool. So again, I'm leaving everything loose for now uh, so that we can tighten stuff later and show you how. Let's go. Oh, I keep wanting to fly solo, but we, let's follow my directions here. All right, so now, yes, we get to the front wheel. Ah, very important point. Yes, I think I forgot to mention this to you, but it may be apparent to most of you, but sometimes this does get missed. Uh, a lot of times bikes, and I can't remember this one, but yeah, the fork will come, um, it'll actually come backwards in the box because it fits better that way for shipping, but it needs to be pointed forward. There's actually a yellow sticker on, uh, I'll show you. It's right here, Boop. and it says uh, which way the which way is forward. Okay, sometimes sometimes folks miss that, and then it's uh, frustrating. Okay, cool. So, and then also what we're going to do is the the wheel won't fit through the brakes right here because they're um, adjusted more or less for the for the rim, but the tire is wider. Uh, so anyway, there's a very easy trick for this though. You just grab the noodle in this bracket right here. I'll try to do it so you can see and then you're gonna pull them together and then the brakes will pull apart like that, okay? It doesn't require any tools and it's actually a pretty quick operation. There we go, we have them back again. And I'll take them back apart again. Now we can slip the front wheel in, which again has the motor in it right here. It's like magic, isn't it? The, uh, the tire will indicate to you which direction it should go. Um, Yeah, but anyway, the tread, like I said, kind of shows, uh, it kind of points in the forward direction. All tread will have uh, a pattern that has kind of like a, uh, kind of like an arrow pointing towards the front. So this axle, oh, by the way, there's a couple pieces of plastic here that are packaging. Okay, but then this little rubber guy here that's on the wire, that's, that's to protect the wire connection. I'm gonna back these axle nuts off a little bit. You'll see that the, um, on the inner part of the hub, there's a, there's a part that has a little tab on it. And then also that the axles are not completely round, they're actually flat on two sides. And uh, that's on purpose so that uh, you know, so that the wheel doesn't just spin in the dropouts. It's so that the wheel, so the axle is held and the wheel will rotate around it. So anyway, you just gotta make sure that, uh, I just want you to be aware of that because sometimes it can make it a little hard when you're getting into the fork. So here we go, I'm just gonna lift it up, go through those open brakes that we opened, and then we're going to slide the fork right onto the axle. It went right on there because I had the flat part lined up there. Okay, cool. Now, the uh, here's the, um, the the wire that's going to connect here. I'll tell you what, that's attached to there. I, I like I like the idea I had before. I like this little idea where you pull it out and give it a little twist. Just twist it around like that and stick it in. I think that that puts the oh, it still leaves it over there, doesn't it? Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. After all that talk with the direction of the tires, I put the wheel in backwards. Um, and the way you can tell is because on this side of the fork, right here, are clips for the wire to hold it, okay? And that's on the right side, and so the, the wire goes on the right side. So yeah, after all my talk about the tread and direction, I went ahead and put it on backwards, and then it wasn't, uh, then the wires weren't lining up very well together. So anyway, that, that's correct now. And then the wires will be here. So I'm gonna just put it back like I had it. Again, you can twist the um, front wires or not. Anyway, another good thing to not have everything tightened yet. See how I had to kind of make a little adjustment because I got a little confused there for a second. Okay, cool. Now we're gonna just tighten down the axle nuts loosely here. Okay.
okay. And what we can do too, let's see what the next direction that wants me to do. Yes, yeah, so we turn the fork forward, we open the brakes up, uh, and all the directions show this. And the, like I said, there's also QR codes. I mean, you're watching the video already, but there's QR codes that have uh, really detailed and short videos for you for each step. Um, slide the wheel in. Okay, then it wants me to reconnect the brakes, which we can do or not do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten the wheel. It's gonna use an 18 millimeter right here. Now, when you're tightening the wheel, you wanna make sure that it's actually centered. Uh, sometimes the wheel could be, depending on how you place it, it could be just slanted a little bit or the surface that you're working on. So you wanna sight it and make sure that it's absolutely centered in there. Uh, that'll make the brake adjustment easier and then also make the wheel uh, function properly, make sure it's seated all the way in the dropouts. Now these guys, these 18 millimeter axle nuts here, need to be absolutely tightened all the way that you can get them. They need to be very, very tight. Nice and tight. All right, cool. And then you can reattach the brakes. Uh, the brakes may require some adjustment. Um, yep, so this one's a little too tight. So I'm going to grab my five millimeter right now and just adjust, loosen them up a little bit. So here's the pinch bolt with cable. Again, we have videos for all these things. I'm going to go ahead and leave that a little bit. I'm going to leave it loose. I'm going to hook it back into the noodle and then pull it back to the tension that I like it. Tighten the pinch bolt back up. Very nice, like that, that's about right. Um, and then I'm going to look at the pads. They're actually adjusted pretty nicely and they're also centered. So, and then the, uh, the lever feel, it's still, it's actually a little bit loose, but I'm gonna I can tighten it back up. Uh, with the lever feel, you want to basically be able to pull the lever and then start to feel some resistance about halfway through. You never wanna be able to pull the lever all the way to the handlebar. So this is a, a little bit on the loose side, but you can adjust yours accordingly. All right, now, Important part for attaching the electronics, the connection here. Again, the pins here are very, very delicate on this connector. This white piece here is just to protect those pins. So pull that off carefully. Don't hit any of the, these brass colored pins. And then you want to discard that plastic there. Now there's an arrow on this piece and also on this piece. Probably the most common uh, cause of, uh, of, of an e-track not working or off the bat or whatever is that these two connectors are not pushed in far enough. Um, we see all the time that they're put in partially uh, and then the track doesn't work and then we ask the customer to shove it all the way. There's actually a line right here above the arrow. You want to go ahead and push this side, the female side of the connector, all the way down to that line. It has to be f really firm, solid engagement or it just won't work. Um, Electricity has to have that nice positive connection. So I'm going to line the arrows up. I'm going to put this in very carefully. Make sure they go in, slide in. And then we want to, once we get a nice connection, push it all the way to where that line is either lined up with the bottom of that female side or is actually being covered by it. So that's a very nice positive connection there. And then we have these nice little clips here. You can grab those with your with the flathead side of your little screwdriver and pry those off, those little plastic guys, and then just put the wire in there. That's just to keep it looking nice. And that clips right in. Sometimes folks use zip ties, that uh, works too. There we go. And then there's this little cover right here, which will help protect that kind of delicate little uh, curvature of the wire coming right out of the axle there. So then that goes and fits right over the axle nut. There you go, just like that. Okay, cool. All right, let's, uh, we can go ahead and do the front fender then. Front fender is very simple. There's a tab on it right here. The tab's gonna go in the back part of the fork. 
So first thing I'm going to do, first thing I'm going to do is remove the hardware here. There's a bolt, a thick curved washer, a regular washer, and a nut. And then we're going to put the tab in like this behind. There we go. The tab will be behind the fork right here. Okay. And then put the bolt in. Next, after the bolt, comes the curved washer with the curved part against the fork. If you're getting this mixed up, it's really not going to matter all that much. Um, and then the regular thin washer and then the nut, which again has nylon on it, so you'll only be able to get so far before it stops. But then what we can do is, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one down. Get my 10 millimeter and my Phillips, and we'll tighten these guys down. Boy, having a ratcheting set makes it a lot quicker. A ratcheting set of anything, wrenches, whatever. But uh, you see, that didn't take too long using the set that comes with the bike. And then we need to go ahead and attach it with these little Allen bolts here. There's one uh, on each side. Those are uh, going to use the five millimeter Allen. So. There we go. I'm just gonna take a little longer with these guys. Um, with a professional set of Allens, they have a lot of them have a really nice pivot tip on the other end, and you can just uh, screw it right in super fast. Or you can have a, or if you have a ratcheting set of Allens, it's really nice too. So here we go. This one's easier because there's no, no wire in the way. Boom, and that's the front fender there. We did it, great. Um, okay, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust these handlebars now. So that's a six millimeter Allen wrench. And what I like to do is just stand over the wheel and sight the stem. The part that holds the handlebar onto the bike, onto the trike is called a stem. Um, there is a maximum or minimum, uh, in, or, yeah, minimum insertion. Right here it is. This has to be all the way into the headset itself. So if you want the handlebars to be higher, I would pull the cover up and make sure that you see that that minimum insertion goes all the way into the headset till it's covered, okay? It's very clear where that line is. And uh, they all just put that there for fun. I've seen quite a few times when someone's tried to install their stem like this, uh, much too far out, and it has not ended well. Like that, th that's basically, you're just asking for it. There's a limit to physics, um, and that's why they put that line there. You really have to have this line fully inserted. So that's the highest we can have the stem here on this one. They do make longer stems if you feel like you need um, higher or longer stem, okay? But anyway, so there's the minimum insertion right there. We've got it, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Yeah, I've seen uh, quite a few of those where folks tried to get away with uh, cheating physics and the stem will just pop right out or bend. It's too much leverage. Okay, and then you can uh, tighten it almost all the way down. I just got a little bit too tight there. I'm gonna loosen it just a little bit. Just, you want just firm enough that it'll kind of hold itself but can be swiveled back and forth. And then we'll line the stem up with the Wheel, it's just eyeball, so you just do your best. After, if after you ride it, you feel like it's going a little to the right or to the left, you can always adjust it. Okay, and then the handlebars are in this very peculiar position here, again, for packaging. Uh, sometimes that throws folks off, like why are the handlebars so weird? That's because we have to shove it into a very tiny box. Um, otherwise, uh, shipping will literally cost around $1,000. It's uh, unbelievable how much the shipping goes up if you violate the uh, the size limitations. So anyway, once you lo loosen this pinch bolt here, you can quite easily pivot the handlebars to however you like. The standard go-to is just to have the grips roughly parallel with the ground. Afterwards, uh, you know, you can adjust your liking if you want a little more down, a little more up. You know, you'll figure out what you want once you start riding. Um, but you won't know until you start riding. So maybe just start with them level like this. And always on both of these, on the stem bolt, this one, and on the handlebar pinch bolt. 
give it everything you got. You want those to be really, really firm and strong right there. I'm gonna take this packaging off now. Okay. We have the display right up here. This display uh, can also be, it's a little bit loose so that you can adjust it if you need to. And then we can tighten it down. That's why they gave me this three millimeter. It's a three millimeter at 2.5, I'm not sure. Um, looks, like a, looks like maybe a three, but we're splitting hairs, aren't we, with half a millimeter. And then you can tighten that display down uh, at whatever angle works best for you. I think they probably keep that a little loose too for shipping, um, so there can be some some flexibility. When things are too rigid, sometimes they might be more prone to breaking in transit. There we go. Um, we could actually at this point uh, test it. We can turn the battery on um, over here. Sorry, turn that on. Hold these two buttons under here. We have a video for this too. Yeah, it comes right on. So anyway, watch this. This, is, this will be fun. Woo! Oh, my fenders are holding it because I haven't tightened them down yet. But uh, yeah, it's ready to go, as you can see. <laughs> Just right out of the box like that. Cool. I'm going to turn the battery off now. Cover that port back up. You'll get used to it. Um, the battery can be moved, removed, too. It has keys. They're dangling right here on this cross piece um, between the, chain, the seat stays. So you can use the keys here to remove your battery. Uh, you can charge the battery in the bike or out of the bike. Um, doesn't really matter. Uh, one may be more or less convenient than the other. Um, but there you go. It's also locked in there so that no one can steal it. These batteries are pretty darn expensive. Uh, okay, cool. So I think we're almost to the point where we're just gonna tighten everything down and uh, go for a ride here. Yeah, so the last part will be the seat and pedals and then uh, I'll show you how to put the basket together. Um, Pedals. I love pedals. They're so uh, they're so mysterious. Uh, it's a very strange thing about the pedals. There's actually, of course, two, and there's one that's marked right and one that's marked left. Um, it should have a sticker that says R um, or L, and then the R one shows uh, the normal turning direction of, counter, of of clockwise, and left shows counterclockwise. That's because the left pedal is uh, reverse threaded. Okay, so very important to know. Um, also, if the sticker is missing, not to worry, on the end of the spindle or axle, uh, it's actually stamped with an R and an L, okay? Which side is the right side and the left side of the bike? Well, if you're standing on the bike, that's what determines the right and left side of it. So here I'm standing on it, the right side is over here. It's also the side uh, that the chain is on, okay, the drive side. So with the right pedal, you're going to turn it in the normal way that you're used to, the normal way that a screw goes in, it turns, it turns clockwise. Another way to think about it is that both pedals turn uh, oops, hold on. turn uh, towards the front of the bike. Okay, so anyway, that that kind of throws folks off sometimes because uh, no one's no one's used to a reverse threaded part. Um, and then we need the uh, 15 millimeter to tighten that pedal down. There's a little bit of debate in the bicycle world, even amongst engineers, I think, um, as to why the left pedal is reverse threaded, um, and there's a lot of misconceptions about it. Uh, there's a really interesting phenomenon called precession you can look up on Wikipedia uh, that might help you understand why, why it is uh, reverse threaded. But um, obviously it's because, uh, so the left pedal won't come off. But um, a lot of folks, I don't know, I think that uh, when they're debating, they're wondering if it's really necessary or not, but I think the way it actually started, and I, Legend has it, I don't know, but um, you know that the, uh, the Wright brothers who invented flight, or at least here in America, there's another German guy too, I think that sometimes people wonder if, who invented it first. But anyway, the Wright brothers from my home state of, well, in my home state of North Carolina, uh, did the first flight. They're also bicycle mechanics, and legend has it that they're the ones that invented the uh, reverse thread on the left pedal. Um, my theory is that they probably had them both thread the the usual way, and then some bikes there are starting to fall off, and so they reverse the thread. So whether uh, the procession effect is actually real or not, not sure, but um, I'm betting if you put it, if you put a left pedal in with regular threads, it would come off at some point. 
I don't know. But anyway, the left pedal is reverse threaded. So you're gonna have to turn it in counterclockwise. There we go. Okay, now let's put the seat onto the seat post. Again, um, we're doing this so that we don't lose the seat post down into the frame. You really don't wanna do that. Those are some of the most frustrated calls we get, um, which is why uh, in most of our directions now, we, um, we show to put the seat onto the seat post first. Um, let's see if this one does. Most of my directions do. So actually in this direction, it assumes that the seat's actually already attached to the seat post, which it may have been at one point during manufacturing, but now it's not. But uh, it's my recommendation to go ahead and put the seat on the seat post first. We'll just throw it in there. Now it's very important when you're doing this, there's a little tab kind of shaped like a V at the bottom part of the uh, seat clamp. The uh, seat post has to go all the way down to that. If it doesn't, then the clamp can't really clamp properly. It just won't, it just won't really work and you'll keep trying to tighten and tighten and your, loose, your seat will be loose, okay? Um, so anyway, I've never really seen one of these fail. I have, however, seen a lot of folks that have not installed them properly or gotten them tight enough and their seat continues to swivel. Uh, I just, I mean, these parts are all exactly the same and I've never, I've just never personally come across a bike in years and years of working on other people's bikes, on my own bikes, um, of assembling these things, of my not being able to tighten it properly. Um, so if your seat is still swiveling, you gotta make sure that the seat post is going all the way down to that tab and that these two nuts are tightened evenly and very, very tightly, okay? So it's loose right now, so I'm gonna give it kind of like, you know, what I think might be the right angle. And then the size is a 13 or a 14. They always switch it on me, so I'm gonna see which size it is here. Oh, today it's a, no, that's not a, 13, 15, 14, where's 14, here. Yes, it's a 14. Now, when you start to tighten these nuts, it's very important that you tighten them evenly. They both have to be fully engaged with the threads. You wanna see the threads coming out, emerging from both nuts. If you don't, then one of the nuts is going to strip and blow off, um, and that's just because it doesn't have enough threads to, uh, to hold it securely, okay. So now that I have the seat on well enough, I'm gonna go ahead and install it into the bicycle here. Um, the, uh, the seat post is attached with the quick release seat post clamp. Uh, quick release may be a concept that you are not familiar with, but it kind of makes it easy to quickly um, raise and lower the seat, you know, as you prefer, or even if you have different riders. So it's shaped like a C, it has a little bit of an opening. That's the, that's the main important part of it. And then it has this quick release part here where <clears throat> there's actually a very powerful cam right here that can be closed like this to lock the seat post in place, okay? Um, you have to do this absolutely right. The clamp needs to go along the body of the seat post clamp, the cam here, cam lever. Um, a lot of people will do it like this you know, or towards the back like that. And there's two problems with that. One, the cam, it's hard for the cam to work properly um, <clears throat> if it's not in the right position along the body of the seat post clamp. Also, for you to be able to get the pressure that you need to hold the seat if it's in the wrong position, you'll probably break the bolt. It's not a huge bolt there. The cam is very powerful. Um, and so it's made to be able to stop right there before it breaks anything. Um, if, it's, if you're doing it downward, or upwards or to the back, to the rear like that, it's uh, very easy to actually over tighten and you'll just snap, you'll just snap that bolt. Um, that can happen with any, any seat post clamp. So in this case, uh, so also the opening of the seat post clamp has to line up with the slot in the frame, okay? Because the frame actually is, is pinched in to hold the seat post. It's pretty ingenious and very simple, uh, but for it to work, <clears throat> the opening in the seat post clamp needs to line up with the slot here. On most bikes, the slot is to the rear, but because we have a battery here, they've put the slot here in the front. So make the opening of the seat post clamp line up with the slot in the front here. The bike will already come like that, but just so you know, in case you take it out or whatever, that's what's going on. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and slide the seat in. 
There it goes. It can be to any height here, except again, just like the stem, it does have a minimum insertion. This one's right here. Those little hash marks there have to be completely covered up by the top part of the seat post clamp, okay? Again, I've seen this happen too, where people want to raise it higher, uh, especially tall guys, you know? And you know, the taller you get, also the heavier you get. So you're really messing with physics and also with I mean, damaging a very valuable part of your anatomy uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna mess with having that out too far. I mean, there's just it's just physics. Um, so don't do it. I've seen it happen a lot of times, and I've seen guys, uh, mostly guys, really hurt themselves uh, by by doing that. So make sure that you've got it going all the way in. If you find that you need something higher, uh, which is kind of hard to imagine, but you know, we've sold uh, actually a bike to a very famous basketball player, and he. Uh, he had it out way too far and it it bent. Oh my God, he didn't get hurt, thank God. But you can get a longer and stronger seat post. Of course, it'll cost more than what, a, you know, like this seat post comes with because this fits most people. You don't need to spend the extra money. But for some people that are taller, they're gonna need a longer and stronger seat post. Those are available. Go and get yourself one. Don't, don't chance physics here. It's really not worth the hospital bill. Okay, so now what we do to tighten the seat post clamp is the seat post clamp has a lever in an open and closed position. You can read open when it's open and then you can read closed when it's closed, right? So having the open and then we're going to kind of tighten down the nut on the other side so it starts to give us some resistance and then we'll try closing the clamp. That's a little bit, that was a little bit easy. So I'm gonna try and tighten it a little bit more. It goes a little bit by feel. That's pretty good. If it gets impossible, then it's too tight. If it's, you know, if it doesn't leave an impression in your palm, that's too easy. You can also tell by if the seat post uh, can be swiveled. Now, the seat is swiveling because I haven't tightened it all the way. I'm gonna adjust it to the uh, level that I like. Again, like the grips, they should be roughly, if you were to put a board, say, on this seat, it would be roughly parallel with the ground. Later on, you may want to adjust up or down to your preference. Um, this is generally the, you know, the starting position. So I'll grab my 14 here. And again, these nuts need to be extremely tight you need to make sure that the threads are emerging from both nuts. It's very, very important. Uh, we have a specific video for all of these things too that um, show more detail. They're also short videos. I tried to make them as short as I could while also showing everything that you need. Um, and then I generally finish off on the right side of the bike because uh, I can push down. I can use my body weight actually. Um, if your seat is swiveling, it's just you don't have the nuts tight enough. That's, uh, I mean, I've seen it probably a few hundred times and every time it's just the nuts need to be tighter. So, so give it all you got and then it's not gonna swivel <coughs> hey, right there. And then we also know the seat post is, is good and tight too, right in here. If, these, if this clamp was too loose, say we can loosen, I just loosened it a little bit. I did this, then I can turn it, see? So it's pretty clear. It will still hold vertical, well, Sometimes it can swivel, but it'll still hold vertically, but I actually have it pretty loose right now. So I'm gonna open it back up again, tighten it down. Yeah, that's nice and tight there. Okay, cool. So we went ahead and tightened the pedals down with a 15 millimeter. Um, the seat post is nice and tight. The seat itself is also nice and tight. Most importantly, I would say, with our 18 millimeter, we tightened down these axle nuts. Those we got as tight as we could. We went ahead and installed the front and fender, the front fender completely. We tightened the stem bolt and the uh, handlebar pitch bolt here with a six millimeter. Those also just as tight as you can get them. You don't want these swiveling up or down. It really can hold all the weight you could possibly give it um, when it's installed properly. Uh, improperly, those handlebars could swoop down, and again, you'll uh, you know you'll chew up your face or something. So. If you value your face, just make it nice and tight. All right, now, we have not tightened on the, uh, the axle nuts for the rear or the uh, rear fender. So let's go ahead and do that. We don't want to forget that. I don't remember what size those axle nuts are, quite frankly. I think they're 15s like a normal bike. But let's see. We'll try that first. Here we go. So, nope, they're a little bit bigger. 17? Yeah, 17. Or maybe even 16. 17. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten the inner nut till it's, you know, it doesn't have to be super, super tight, that inner one. But then this outer one, we're going to go ahead and cinch it all the way down. You can feel it, you'll feel those nylocks 
um, inserts, those nylon inserts engage. And then we'll get that nice and tight and then make sure we can still spin. Let's see, oh, fender's getting in the way here. There we go. So it spins nicely, just need to adjust the fenders. And then I'll take the 17 again. I'm gonna go to the other side operation, tighten down the inner nut and then tighten down the outer nut. Again, nice and tight on these guys. Um, I'm gonna keep the wheels on your, on your truck. Okay, cool. Now, and then that wheel turns, just need to adjust the fenders. We'll do that in a little bit. Okay, so you can still see that we're a little rickety right here. So we need to adjust, um, we need to slide the rear assembly such that it makes the uh, chain have the right tension and then we'll go ahead and tighten down the carriage bolts. Those are big, those are big boys. I think those may be 18s as well. Yeah, so 18, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Is that 18? No, it's not 18, I think it's 17. So these are 17. I mean, obviously you'll figure it out. But I'm only using one tool because like I said, the carriage bolt has uh, a square part that holds it in the right position in, in the frame. Nice and tight. And then the chain tension here is, it should be loose enough that it has a little bit of up and down motion, but not too much. And um, I wouldn't worry about too much. I just wouldn't get it too tight, but it's actually hard to get it super tight because um, because you really have to be putting a lot of pressure pulling the rear part away from the main part of the tricycle. By the way, I don't know if anyone's curious or not, but um, I'm making this one because we've had a lot of requests, but this is actually the exact same process as um, the regular trike without the electrical. I don't, there's no, um, if someone can think of a different part of the process, let me know in the comments, but it um, should be the exact same process other than like, you know, go ahead and turn the battery on and turn on the, the display, which we uh, have other video for as well. Okay, now uh, we've tightened all the carriage bolts. Okay, make sure those are nice and tight. This, um, things about ready to go. The last step will be to uh, adjust our rear fenders, make sure that they're clearing the wheels um, and letting us go. And then also to assemble the basket. Where did I throw the basket, guys? Here, here it is. Comes in its own little box here. Um, it would be nice to have a f assembled basket, but it would never fit in the box. Our, uh, our boxes, like I mentioned a couple times, really just teeter right on the brink of the uh, oversize for, for FedEx and UPS. All right, so I'm gonna open this thing. And we have two, well, three main parts here. We have the main part of the basket, the sides and the bottom. And then we have some little metal clips to hold it all together. A few of these guys. And then two brackets, which will attach the basket to the bike. All right, cool. Let's put the basket together and then we'll attach it to the bike. Now, if you look in the in our book here, in our book here, um, there's a QR code. I would scan that. That gives a really nice detailed um, a video of how to put the basket together. It's on a table. It's very well laid out. It shows you exactly what to do. So if you're getting confused about how to put the basket together, uh, that video will be better than this one. Um, but just just uh, you know, scan that QR code there, and it'll pull it right up for you. It's a great video. It uh, shows all the little details. This one I'm just going to do right here like this. And, uh, you know, if you need more help, you can scan that QR code. 
So here we go. I've got sides, back, uh, and then here's the bottom. Now the bottom is uh, rectangular, whereas the other ones are, what do you call that? Oh, it's a trapezoid. All right, cool. So, and you can tell which side goes on which because of their length. Yes. That's right. So, anyway, these little posts here will fit into the little holes there. Nice. Um, and then there. Now again, this is where you can use a friend sometimes. And then there are little hooks on the shorter pieces. And there are loops on the longer pieces. So they'll sit in there. You kind of have to do these about at the same time on all four. This is kind of like a one of those games at the fair. There you go. All right in there. Easy peasy. All right, let's go over here. Again, all four at the same time. Nice, okay. So they're all together like that. Um, and then, I'm gonna go ahead and set it on, on the tricycle so that these pegs on the longer pieces can go all the way down. Okay, see that? That's how it looks. Very nice. The other video, that just part just fell out. The other video shows, uh, <clears throat> shows a lot more detail. Uh, actually, let me remove these nuts right here, nuts and bolts, where it attaches. And then actually, um, when I think about it, for the little clips here that hold everything together, I don't think we have a tool included that will help you with that. So you can put these clips on, but you really need a wrench, uh, not a wrench, sorry. You need pliers or channel locks or something similar, needle nose. Um, and then these little pieces of metal just uh, squished together. In the other video, you can see quite easily how we do it, but you can just put them around the adjoining parts. So then when all these are in place, you'll, you just give them a little squeeze and it clamps it all together. Um, and then placement, I would place maybe uh, four at each corner at the top, two at the bottoms here. and then uh, the rest of them at the bottom four corners. I think zip ties could do the same function. I don't know if they might like look unsightly, I'm not sure. Anyway, so then the next thing, I'm just gonna kind of show you how to do it here because you have that other video you could look at. It's a lot, uh, a lot more detailed. Put the two brackets on top to hold them here. And then we're gonna go ahead and replace the bolt with a washer through the bracket through the frame and then put on the washer and nut and that will hold our uh, hold our basket in place got four of those again and they just go right back to the holes that they came out of. That's another nice thing about having the hardware already in the, on the bike where it goes is that you know exactly where it goes because you pulled it out. There. There we go. Now, finally, um, after you get all that cinched down, so this would be the, uh, the Phillips in 10 millimeter again. Get your basket secured. Uh, last step will be to inflate the tires. Uh, the tires, sometimes they, they change from time to time as far as uh, tire pressure. The tire pressure is found right here on the sidewall. Um, 
it says, uh, let me get right up to here. Right here, it says inflate to whatever. Um, in this case, it's 40 PSI. In the past, we've had them at like 65 or whatever. Um, sometimes that changes from production to production, but anyway, the best thing to do is just look at the tire sidewall. In this case, it's 40 PSI. That's probably what you'll have too, uh, but you may not. Uh, I've seen them vary somewhat um, from time to time or from model to model, but anyway. The exact rate of pressure is here on the tire sidewall. This one says 40 PSI. Uh, and you're gonna look at the, the PSI, that's what we're looking for, uh, pounds per square inch. Okie doke. Um, and then after that, adjust the fenders. Uh, we have a very detailed video for that too, if you need some help with the fenders. Uh, otherwise, we are ready to ride this puppy. Um, just gotta turn it on, uh, video for that as well. Um, how to turn it on, how to use your display, et cetera, et cetera. Also how to charge, which is just really, like charging any other device. You just plug in the charger and then plug it into the wall. Um, so yeah, inflate the tires up and we're ready to ride. Okay, thanks everybody for putting up with that. Uh, I hope that uh, it goes smoothly for you. I know you can do it, I really do. Uh, it might take you a little longer than it just took me. It's, even for me, it took a while. I don't know how long that was, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever. But um, it's gonna take a while. Just, uh, you know, uh, set, set aside some time. Enjoy yourself. Um, and you know, if you start to get a little frustrated, take a break, take care of yourself. Uh, you're going to have an awesome ride here pretty soon, and please give us a call, 310-982-2877. We're here uh, 9 to 5 on uh, Pacific time uh, to answer the phones or chat. You can also email us at theteam at 630.com, which is, uh, remember, 630 is spelled out, S-I-X-T-H-R-E-E-Z-E-R-O, uh, and we'll shoot you back an email or whatever. We've got tons of helpful videos. Again, for some of the details here, you've got the QR codes to scan. Um, in the booklet or just call us up and we'll give you a helpful video. The videos are, are probably the most helpful thing I think for anybody, uh, me too. If I need to learn something new, I just I hop onto YouTube and I just learn it right away. So um, we've made tons of videos specific to our bikes, but there are also other videos um, that are less so. Uh, we can also show you too how to put the, put the chain together with the master link. All right, thanks a ton. Again, Peter630, uh, get riding.